Uh, so the team, yeah, thank you. So the team is back on the court. You haven't played since uh, that College of Charleston game, December 21st. How have you handled the time away from the court? How have you uh, used that extra time just to prepare for uh, conference play? Well, the time away from the court, we didn't use it at all. We, you know, I was with my family and, you know, enjoying the holidays. And then, you know, we, we got back to practice uh, on the 27th. We didn't practice. We didn't, we didn't practice until the 28th because we had to get our testing and get our results back before we could take the court. Um, unfortunately, we found that we had a couple of positive tests. So uh, we had to quarantine the guys who were affected. So we, um, so we have to go forward without those two tests. Um, and everyone else has tested negative consistently since that point. Um, and we will hope that that remains the case. Uh, with today's test, and if so, we're ready to go tomorrow. Yeah, how is that? Just uh, and, and I know you might respect privacy with the names of those players and everything like that. But how do you handle how do you handle that as a team? Just having a player you think will be available, then he isn't, and you don't know when he could come back. How are you just adjusting to that? Um, well, I, I think you go into all of these situations now uh, with the whole landscape, understanding that things can happen. That's the times that we're in. So you have to have an open mind about that going into it so that when these things do happen, you you just accept the fact that this is part of our reality. So you you can't be have a fixed mindset that this is what this is how many guys you're gonna have at practice, or this is how many guys you're gonna have available for games. We've been fortunate to this point. Um, in spite of the fact that we've been affected by injuries and you know, we went into the season thinking we'd have Joe and Nelson and we'd have this deep roster and, uh, and we've had to adjust and we have to continue to, to proceed with a mindset of, of uh, having to adapt. Well, now, upon the positive note, the team is off to a 6-1 and one start. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to look back and see some of the things you've done well and want to improve on, but overall impressions of how non-conference play uh, went for the squad. Well, you know, we, we, we're pleased with the, the fact that we've been able to play all the games that we scheduled um, because that in and of itself is a, an accomplishment under the circumstances. So uh, we're proud of the guys that they were able to uh, do all that we were asking them to do to give ourselves the best possible chance to play the games that we scheduled and we've been able to do that. So uh, that's first. And I think the, the, the thing that's starting to happen inside of our team, which I like, is that we're starting to develop some internal leadership. And that's something that we've longed for since we've gotten here. And the fact that we see some leadership emerging inside of our team is uh, very encouraging. Yeah. And one of those guys been Corey Allen. He was named Sunbelt Player of the Week. Uh, what about his contributions to the team, especially his outside shooting? That's what I've noticed uh, during these contests. He's been a really big threat for you as far as perimeter shooting. But overall impressions of Corey and just the beginning of the year for him. Yeah, yeah I'm super proud of him. You know, I, I couldn't be more proud. and I want him to uh, continue on the trajectory that, that he's on. Um, he's got to continue to improve his conditioning and get in great shape. Um, but he, he's, he's one of the guys who's really emerging as a leader. His, his voice, his attitude, his overall approach to, to the team aspect of the game. Um, he, he's made, he's just made tremendous strides. And, um, all the things that he and I have talked about in the offseason, you see them, you see them taking shape. I mean, he, he, he's done a hell of a job. Couldn't be more fun. Awesome. And then lastly, we've discussed before the the conference play and the unique setup and the schedule as far as consecutive games. We're finally at it. You're going to Coastal Carolina to play two contests. Oh, what ha what's the approach that you're going to have as far as preparing for these two consecutive games as far as scouting and you're going to see the team immediately You know, after you play a first time? Uh, how does the team enter just this unique part of the schedule? Well, you still have 
have to play one game at a time. I think we've all had experiences with playing consecutive days because we've all either played in uh, a conference tournament, in-season tournaments, etc. So playing in consecutive days, we've done it three days. So uh, we've all had some experience with that as coaches. It'll be unique for our team. We've had to lean on our colleagues from uh, across the country because there's other teams that have done it ahead of us this year. And then there's other uh, 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 programs who've played the back-to-back days, at least. So Ivy League colleagues, they do it as a practice in that league. So it's more about how do you manage your week leading up to those games. And so we're, we're taking uh, uh, some notes from, from our colleagues who have either done it this year or in the case of the Ivy League, how, how do you uh, operate if you're playing Friday, Saturday, from Sunday to Friday? What does your week look like? And then as you as we get experience with that, we may make some adjustments going forward. But, uh, like, it, it's a level playing field because we're all doing it, and so we'll all kind of learn as we go. Do you think it's more of a mental a drink or mental issue or mental fatigue, or do you think it's more physical uh, that you expect to maybe have to deal with when you get into the heart of the schedule? I, I don't know if there'll be fatigue. It, I, I think we have to manage it in such a way that, I mean, these guys are young. Uh, uh, if they're healthy, um, I, I don't know that fatigue will necessarily be an issue. Um, and so I, it may very well become an issue if we don't manage things right. Um, it, it, you know, I, I think that's something that's part of what we will learn as we go is uh, how do you avoid fatigue? How do you manage fatigue that sets in? And, um, and then obviously from week to week, game to game, you know, you want to have uh, as much of your roster available as possible.